lately I've been thinking about how people like to compare software. So, for example, what I mean by this is people will compare things like text editors. So, is Vim better than Emacs? Is Emacs better than VS Code? Or they'll compare window managers, like is DWM better than BSPWM? Is BSPWM better than Awesome? Or they'll compare desktop environments. So, is GNOME better than XFCE? Is XFCE better than KDE, for example? And one of the comparisons that doesn't really make any sense is when people start comparing desktop environments with window managers, and that's not because one of them is just way better than the other. The reason is because the comparison doesn't really make any sense. They're so different that comparing the two doesn't really get you anywhere. So today I just wanted to explain why I think this, and hopefully you guys will end up agreeing with me in the end. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do, and let's jump right into it. So first up, I should probably begin by defining terms. So a window manager, generally what that means is it's something that manages your window. So what does that actually mean though? So it'll manage your window locations, your window sizes, whether the window is hidden, whether it's tiling, whether it's full screen, whether it's floating, things like this. So it just manages the state of your windows. Typically, it'll also come with a status bar. This isn't always the case. BSPWM doesn't come with one. DWM does, i3 does, and a bunch of others do. And also sometimes they'll come with a hotkey daemon. Now once again, not all of them do. BSPWM doesn't, it uses SXHKD. But i3 comes with one, Awesome comes with one, DWM comes with one. And then probably some others don't. So typically when you install a window manager, you'll get those little extra programs and the window manager. And that's it. You don't get any like terminals, you don't get an email client or anything like that. It's just the window manager and the stuff that it needs to run. Now, what about a desktop environment? So a desktop environment is a full environment to use your computer, basically. So typically you'll get your status bar and your hotkey daemon as well, but you'll get default apps as well. Now this usually includes a terminal, an email client, a browser, a text editor, um, applets for your uh, status bar, various things like this. So you'll get a lot of default apps. Some of them you won't use, but they'll be installed on your computer when you actually install the desktop environment. Now, as I said, you also get a hotkey daemon. And for all those programs you install, you'll typically get some sort of default configuration. Now, not every single one is going to get configured. Some of them just don't have configuration files. Some of them the desktop environment author just didn't bother to configure. But you'll get some sort of configuration generally. And the last thing that you get is a window manager. Typically, it's going to be a floating window manager, but sometimes you get tiling window managers. I don't know if there's any desktop environments that use a tabbing window manager. There might be, but typically it'll either be floating or tiling. So what does this actually mean then? So this is why the comparison between a desktop environment and a window manager doesn't actually make any sense, because what a window manager actually is, is it's just a piece of of a desktop environment. So for example, KDE, its window manager is KWIN. GNOME 3 has Mudder. GNOME 2 used a different window manager. I don't remember what it was called. I Googled it like two minutes ago and I already forgot the name of it, but it has a window manager for itself. And XFC has XFWM. Now, depending on the desktop environment you actually use, you can sometimes actually switch out this window manager. And this is probably my core reason why comparing the two doesn't actually make any sense because say for example let's compare KDE and BSPWM you can run them both at the same time just get rid of KWIN and replace it with BSPWM and now you're running KDE and you're running BSPWM because all BSPWM is is a window manager it manages your windows that's all its job is it doesn't really make sense to compare the two as if they are two comparable entities so this would be like comparing for example a car and a tire. So yes, you can technically get from point A to point B with a car and a tire. One of them is going to be much quicker at the start, but you can technically get there. So the desktop environment will be quicker. We're going to assume the desktop environment is the car in this case, but you can build up an entire car around your tiling window manager and get just as much work, if not more done. It's just going to take quite a bit more time to actually get it configured. So this is why I defined my terms earlier. So technically, if you're going to think about it with your big brain, a window manager is a minimal installation of a desktop environment. Now, it's not of any specific desktop environment. What it is, it's a minimal installation of your own custom desktop environment. So a desktop environment, as I said before, it contains a bunch of default apps. It contains a hotkey daemon, your default configurations, and a window manager. So 
if you were to add your configurations, if you were to install all your apps, whatever they end up being, whether it's uh, a terminal and you use NVIM as your editor, or you use VS Code as your editor and you use Kitty as a terminal or, or Alacrity and you use Mutt as an email client or maybe you use Thunderbird, it doesn't really matter what you actually install in the end. What a window manager basically is, once you've installed everything up, a window manager with a bunch of installed programs alongside of it is effectively a desktop environment. Now, the only difference between that and GNOME and that or KDE is the fact that it's not actually put into a package and it's not available in your distro's repos. But there's nothing stopping you doing that. So if you wanted to, you could take all of your programs you have installed and all of your configurations that you've set up, put it into a package and then put it on the AUR, or if you really wanted to put the effort in, you could get it on the main repos for your distro. So in the end, doesn't that basically make a desktop environment just a fancy bootstrapping script? Now I've talked about bootstrapping scripts in the past and why I don't really think that you should be running someone else's, but for a personal use case, bootstrapping script is very useful just so you can easily move around from computer to computer or if you need to like build up a new computer, you don't need to then like worry about how you're gonna get all your configurations onto another one. You can just use your bootstrapping script and install everything from the start like that and it will work perfectly. So as I was saying, a desktop environment is basically a fancy bootstrapping script and a window manager is basically a minimal installation of a desktop environment. So. Does that make sense to you guys? I think that makes perfect sense in my head at least. So I think the question should be reframed from are desktop environments better than window managers? Something more along the lines of do you want something that works out of the box or do you want to configure a lot? Now this isn't to say that something like KDE or GNOME or XFCE can't be configured a lot, but if you just want a computer that works out of the box, install KDE or install GNOME or install XFCE. And this is true for the built up distros as well. So if you want something that works out of the box, install Arco, install Manjaro, install uh, Ubuntu, anything like that. If you want to configure a lot, install Arch, install Void, install Gentoo, something where you don't have a lot of stuff getting in your way. Now, along with those as well, you can obviously configure Ubuntu a ton and you can strip down Ubuntu, you can strip down Manjaro, but if you are going in with the intention of configuring, I think you might probably have a better time if you do just start from a completely blank slate. But if I was, say, getting someone new into Linux, I wouldn't say, here's Arch Linux with BSPWM on it, because obviously they're just gonna get really sick of it pretty quickly. I would say, here is say Manjaro with KDE installed on it. Because for someone like that, it just makes far more sense to give them something that will just work out of the box and they don't really need to worry about if they don't want to worry about it. I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say in this video. Now, there's probably some other stuff I could have touched on, but I think for now, that's probably everything I wanted to say. If I missed anything, leave me a comment down below and I will address it. Maybe I'll do a second video if there's enough things that I missed, but for now, I think that pretty much wraps up why I don't think this question makes any sense. If you have any extra stuff though, then feel free to let me know and I'll be happy to address it. So if you like this video, then remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in, so go check it out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, uh, down below, <laughs> I've got my social links that'll be my Discord, my Telegram, all of that sort of stuff. So go check that out if you want to chat with me or you want to get video updates. I've been doing this long enough and I still manage to make mistakes on my outro. I have no idea how I keep managing to do this. But anyway, down below I've got my support links. So if you want to support the channel, then I've got my Patreon and various other links down below. So feel free to check those out if you do want to support the channel. But as always, if you don't want to, then you don't have to. But any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platform. So that'll be my BitTube and my library. So go check those out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think I'm gonna to try to drag this out for a couple extra seconds because you know, YouTube really cares about the 10 minute mark. And now I know some people are probably gonna say, but oh, they don't really care about 10 minute mark. And no, they actually do because 10 minutes is where you can do mid rolls. Now I don't think I actually have mid rolls running on my videos. I haven't actually checked because I don't think YouTube does them automatically, but giving YouTube the option to run mid rolls 
does make it so your videos are far more likely to actually get like pushed in the algorithm. So I don't know for sure if that's the fact, but from what I've seen, that seems to be the case. And judging by what some of these significantly larger channels say, I'm pretty sure that seems to be the case. So anyway, that should be enough stalling for now. I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.